What's going on, y'all? KM Best back again with another pros from other games. Rate the cards in Marvel Snap. I really need to digest that down to a little bit more of an easily understandable series name. I am joined by North American international champion from Pokemon Card Game, Cyrus Davis. Cyrus, you have played Marvel Snap before, but you have not played in a decent amount of time. And as a champion Pokemon player, I guess first things first, introduce yourself to the audience. Yeah, so I have been playing for um, a solid like 12 years, um, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I'm 21, so I wasn't allowed to like travel for tournaments or anything like that or yeah. play super competitively um, until about 2018. That was like my first competitive season. Um, I top forward my second regional championships in the Masters division. Um, and then my most recent claim to fame is I'm the North American International Champion last year, which was, um, at the time, the biggest tournament held outside of Japan ever. And I believe I'm the youngest international champion as well. Um, so I'm playing Pokemon for a while. Most ju just recently um, had my, my peak result. And uh, yeah, I a lot of experience with, with card games in general. I, I like to dip my toe in everything a little bit. So I played a bit of Snap. Um, I think I'm pretty good at it, but I've never gotten into it super competitively. Um, just right. played it like, super casually. So take note, y'all in the audience. She is one of those, you know, wonder kid people who's just like blowing everyone out of the water. Will this wonder kid absolutely destroy my challenge? Let's find out. All right, y'all. Let's get started. First up is Annihilus. Annihilus is a 5-6. Now, he has a unique ability. Cards with power below zero swap sides, but if they can't, they are destroyed, and only cards with power below zero will go over to your opponent's side if you play this card. 5-6. Cyrus, what are your thoughts on Annihilus? Okay, right off the bat, it seems a little awkward. It seems like a card that like would have support, like it synergizes with something. Um, but like, just like reading it, I like I really don't think it seems super strong. Um, I like I feel like there has to be like a card or two that synergizes well with this, but I, I'm gonna say it's like not good. I I, I feel like a five six is not that great. Um, it's like pretty mid. It needs like a good effect, and the effect feels like super niche to me. So you're right and you're wrong. Uh, you are right. There are some cards that synergize with this you are wrong in that this card is actually completely awesome. This is like a great, <laughs> great, great card because of those cards that synergize with it. I don't know if you're familiar with them. You might be familiar with the hood. It's the one negative three that adds a yes. demon to your hand. He he goes in every like hood bounce deck basically because you get to like free roll. You like play a hood for one, you bounce him back, you play a beast on him, you do all that. Like that is an archetype. He also, of course, goes with the card Sentry, who is a 4-10, who creates a negative 10 on the board, and you send over the negative 10. I did 10. not know that card. You did not know that card, and that is why that we have you on here, because this is how we, we get you, all right? Not, <laughs> not everyone can be a 21-year-old Pokemon champion, but everyone watching this can feel smarter than you for knowing <laughs> this, all right? That's how these videos work. No. That's a hundred percent. I, I, that is my honest theory. I really do think that is that is why these videos work. Let me know in the comments if that is actually why these videos work. Next up is a card you may be familiar with based on the last time you played Marvel Snap. And actually, I think this is a good time to talk about like your asymmetric way of playing Marvel Snap. It made making this list pretty difficult because what you told me was you played Marvel Snap as recently as the Miss Marvel season. However, you like our collection level a thousand and didn't really level up that high. You don't have most of series three. And so it makes it very hard for me to find cards that I think you probably won't know. This is a card I think you might know, but not in this form. Yeah, I might have seen this card before, but I definitely don't have it. I definitely don't have this card. Uh, I don't really recognize the effect. Yeah, I mean, even if you did have this card, you might not recognize the effect. Current Elsa Bloodstone is a 2-3 after you play a card that 
fills this location, meaning the one that she is at, and only the one that she is at, it gets plus two power. Okay. This seems like a uh, like a pretty good card to me. Like a two a two five on play, just like see like because there are a lot of decks that like are pretty much always gonna like be able to fill a location. So I feel like this is a good card. I like uh, it's in those decks. It's gonna like always be a two five, um, which is just really strong. And there's like not that much your opponent can. It's not like like I know Lizard where where like you know yeah. like super easy for your opponent to play around that, but this just feels like a free 2-5. So I feel like this is a good card. I am loving this because it is so clear that, like, yeah, you're, like, collection level 1500. You have a different experience <laughs> of these cards than, like, the average, like, high-end grinder here. Because, like, that that's actually fascinating, That hearing that thought process. Because, like, the thought process for me is, you know, a free 2-5, that's cool, but it's not that good. And it's actually, yeah, I... I because I know all the stuff that I know, I'm right about that, right? Like, this is, yeah, you can play a 2-5 in a deck that's filling up all the lanes, or you can just do something a little more aggressive, invest in something a little more serious. This is, at best, a 2-5 with a difficult condition to hit. And the way this card was actually used when she was good was you would use, like, a card like Jeff, and it would get the buff. You'd move the card out. I guess we'll use Nightcrawler as an example for, like, collection-level early players. You play a Nightcrawler, that would be the fourth card. You'd move the Nightcrawler out. You play yeah. a Vision, you'd move the Vision out. That's how it worked when she was good, but that worked a lot better when her effect happened across all of the lanes, and that's how she used to be. They, like, this is a card that used to be extremely powerful that they basically totally murdered. Is that... Was it... Hmm. Was it, like... If you play a card to fill any lane, she has plus two power. It was that, but plus three. Oh, okay. That's pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they killed her. Like, they absolutely killed her. She was probably yeah. the best card they've ever made. And now she is very mid. <laughs> like, very, very. Do they do that That's in fair. Pokemon? They don't, they don't nerf cards in Pokemon. They'll, like, they pretty rarely even ban cards in Pokemon. I like, we don't have any cards banned currently. Um, they typically just rot rotate stuff out. I'd say, like, less than any other card game, they do not, like, nerf or ban stuff. Do you, We've had, like, three bans ever. Do you prefer that? Like, where it's just, like, everyone is doing something completely ridiculous? Or I would you prefer if it was more curated? I prefer if it was more curated. I, like, other card games that I've played, you know, have had bans that I've been happy about, for sure. I think they're, like, I think Pokemon's never been... There, there have been some formats of Pokemon that you just are like, okay, I'm just waiting for this card to leave the meta. Even right now, like, there are some cards that people complain about all the time. Um, it doesn't make the meta, like, to a point where um, it, like, ruins the game. I don't think we've... When, the, the few times that we've had cards, like, completely ruin the game, they've been removed. Um, but there are definitely, like, I would like to see things be made a little bit more fresh by having a team that spends a little bit more time considering if some card should leave the format. Um, yeah. I think Pokemon is in, like, unique unique position in that, like, the Japan Pokemon team would make most of those decisions, and then the North American Pokemon team would just sort of copy what they do, and there's not a ton of communication between both teams, so that's why, like, stuff doesn't really get changed in Pokemon. That's interesting. Because, like, I, I bring that up because it's, like, a major discourse topic in Snap right now, because, like, they keep nerfing stuff and buffing stuff, and it makes people feel like, they can't ever, like, invest in something. And I feel like Pokemon is, like, the exact opposite case where it's like, yeah, you can have this deck and you'll have it. You'll have, like, that'll yeah. be your deck. There's nothing that's going to happen to that for a long time. And you can just play it forever. And uh, that's, like, it comes with upsides and downsides. And I just, I think it's interesting hearing your perspective on that. Yeah, I think the meta still changes really fast in Pokemon, which is why it doesn't feel like as much of a problem as it would in other games. Because, like, every new set... There are like a couple of decks that were good before that set came out that just mm -hmm. kind of aren't good anymore. Um, so you still like are at risk of your deck just being like neutralized by like ma new matchups being really yeah. bad for it. Next up is Gladiator with one of the more ridiculous stat lines in the game, a 3-8, but on reveal, add a card from your opponent's deck to their side of this location. If it has less power, it dies. If it has more power, it's just there. They get it for free. 
Oh, this is a tough one. Because I know that, like, I, I feel like this seems like such a risky card when, like, ah, but, like, most of the time it's going to be good. I feel like it's too RNG-based for, like, I feel like this card, honestly, if, like, people played it, I feel like this is a card that people probably don't play that much, and if people played it more, there'd be, like, some situations where you just get really lucky and win the game because of it. But I feel like people probably is like probably not considered super meta because of how RNG it is and how risky it is. So I'm gonna say this card is not good. See, this is an interesting one because I think a lot of really good players think this card is really good. But it it's one of those really good player cards that doesn't catch on the way that it probably should downwards in the meta game because of just how scary it is to play some of the time. But most of the time when you play this card, it is actually just a three-eight. Like, like the vast yeah. majority of the time when you play this card, it's just like, oh, that's a 3-8. That's twice as good as the vanilla stat line at this level. Like, it's it's unbelievably strong. And I I certainly played this card a lot. So I would say that this is a very good card, actually. That is, that is how I would go about describing this card. It's very good. It's very strong. It's actually indicative of another issue in Marvel Snap, though, which is there's just not a lot of good three drops. And so you end up with like this 3-8 with potential downside being so much better than everything else at its slot, such that whenever you're just like, I need a 3-drop with stats, this is the guy. Because the next best 3-drop with stats that doesn't have an even bigger downside is like a 3-5. And so you end up with just like, this is three extra points. You just play him even if you end up losing because of him. And if things go really bad, you can just retreat. So it's like yeah, it's one of those I, betting game thing. I was gonna say the Marvel the Marvel Snap meta is interesting, even like at all collection tiers, because like there are definitely a lot of strategies that are like okay, well, I mean, if I get like the unlucky RNG, I just retreat and only lose one one mm -hmm. point, right? So I mean, I like I'm sort of trying to like it's a little bit different. I think thinking of the cards in like a tournament setting versus thinking of them in like a ladder setting too, right? Uh yeah, I actually would say that this is like <laughs> because a so good much card Marvel, in general, yeah. Yeah, but, like, because Marvel Snap is such a betting game, like, you think of a deck like this, or you think of a deck like, oh, any deck playing Gladiator, but, like, any deck playing, like, say, Thanos Lockjaw, right? Which is just, <laughs> like, the most gambling you can do and still be called, like, a card game deck as opposed to a gambling deck like Hella or something, right? <laughs> and those decks are decks that win tournaments. Hella's not. Thanos Lockjaw is. But that's because, like, the RNG is controlled in a way that it rewards you for being smart about your betting. And yeah. Gladiator's another one of those cards, for sure. Next up is Martyr, a 1-5. She is reverse Captain Marvel. At the end of the game, she will move to a location and try to lose you the game. At risk of being wrong on calling all of these cards bad, I am going to call this one bad again. This feels bad to me. I feel like... I feel like enough games are close enough that this is not a good card. I don't know, but a 1-5 is so good. Like thinking about like other cards that are like one drop with high base lines have like some pretty bad drawbacks and still see play. And you're you can probably have ways to remove this if you need to. No, I'm gonna say this card's bad. I, I feel like I feel like it's not worth like there are better one drops. Okay, I'm glad. I'm really glad you didn't talk yourself out of that one because yes, this <laughs> card sucks. This <laughs> is like yeah, it's there's terrible. definitely a way better one drop. Yes, no, absolutely. Like if you wanted to play a card that rewards you for filling all the locations, you could play Ant Man. You'd lose at most one power, right? If you wanted to play a one five that you could get rid of the ability on, you could play Titania, which is also a one five that has additional upside. There's not a lot of room for Martyr <laughs> in any kind of deck right now. She has, like, this insanely specific niche of she's a 1-5, and so you get priority and, like, cheat out a Professor X into her lane, which one guy ever has done in a, like, top 100 setting. Literally one guy who is known for playing weird decks played this card with some moderate amount of success. Every other person who has played this card, as far as I can tell, has done absolutely nothing with it. It is very, very bad, and... My Martyr, Martyr shows up on these kind of videos a lot because it's just like, what a weird card. I love to show that to people. Here's a question, though. What number do you think would have to be on the card to make that effect playable? 
honestly, for me, I feel like it'd have to be like a one nine. Like, Ooh, Jesus. Most people like are a, like, you know, like one six, one seven. You're just like, no, I'm not even, playing this crap. No, I'm not. Like a one eight that loses me the game if it moves. Like, I feel like the games are just like, like, so many games are decided like so closely and with like, well, I mean, you're, still, you're still, still getting eight power on your side of the board for one. It's hard to lose a yeah, lane with eight. That's you know what I mean? Like Nine to feel comfortable. I'm not playing this <laughs> Next up is Dazzler, who just got a bit of a buff. She is a 2-2 two -two with an ongoing ability, plus two power for each location that's full on your side of the board. I just realized, like, as we're doing this, we've, we've covered a lot of, like, fill up the board cards i'm not really sure why but like this is like the third <laughs> fill up the board card that we've had on here so yeah we can put all these cards in the same deck <laughs> i hope not <laughs> so what it so i've seen this card before what what did she used to do she used to cost three now she oh, okay costs okay two which is probably the most significant buff you can give yeah to like any card like that's, going from three to two is a huge, huge deal in this. Yeah. Game. Hmm. Plus two power for each. I feel like this is this has got to be good now. As like, there's got to be a lot of decks that can just completely fill up the board. Hmm. No, I'm gonna say I feel like this still isn't good enough for to be like super meta. If if what was that card earlier? What was the two five that we talked about earlier? Elsa. Elsa, yeah. If Elsa isn't good, I feel like this card isn't good. It's like definitely better than Elsa, but I still feel like it's not enough. So this is a bit of a trick question. This is like a newer card, so I can't really give you a hard answer on it. My instincts on it are that this card is, you know, pretty good. Like, it's not like, oh my god, the new meta threat, Dazzler. But like, it's a pretty good card. It's just like, it's not a thing that moves the needle. It, it won't make those fill the board decks into elite top contenders on its own but it is a very good piece of those decks should they ever get what they need out of new cards does that make sense like it, it is now like a an archetype cornerstone but the question is how good the archetype is and yeah, that's true. right now the archetype is not that good but if it ever does become good she will likely play a part in it because she's like a two eight if you fill the board up, and that is actually that like that's where we get into like okay, that's actually just really good numbers, right? Like that's yeah. a good card if you do that. It's just that like right now, a lot of the decks that are looking to fill the board up are doing so with buffs that go on specific cards. So for example, are you familiar with the card Patriot? Uh yeah, is that that's the card that like unlocks abilities? No, that's high evolutionary. Oh, okay, Patriot okay, is the yeah. one that gives plus two power to the cards with no abilities with no abilities right and so that's one of the decks that wants to fill the board up but unfortunately you know dazzler has an ability so it's like all right well she doesn't really go yeah. there and there's like zoo decks which are buffing one drops and dazzler is a two drop so it's like okay well, she doesn't really go there and you just you, you can run her in those decks just because she's a two eight a lot of the time and that's worth it but there's not something where she's a perfect fit just yet Mm -hmm. But she is, like, I've seen her in, like, for example, uh, like, late turn decks where it's just, like, my final turn is playing all the cards across all the spots on the board. And she's just, like, a 2-8 a in those decks. That's compelling to me. Uh, she's, I would say that she's, like, I would say your answer is roughly correct, except leave it a little more open-ended because there's some genuine future potential upside here. Of the three yeah. cards we've looked at that are about filling the board up, she's definitely the best one. Do you have experience with, like, paper TCGs? Yeah, I've played Magic the Gathering, and I've... Uh, Magic the Gathering is the only one I've played in paper, but I've played uh, MTG Hearthstone and Runeterra before. Yeah, so it's called this, like, like a card that you buy for the binder, you know? Yeah, it's... Like uh, you, yeah, just in case. You get, yeah, it's, it's like, like it's, you might be building a deck and you throw yeah. it in there, because it, it works yes. with this deck that you're building now. I mean, I think if you're a speculator, this is, like, one of those cards you pick up, you buy, like, 50 at a dollar, and you're like, someday yeah. this will be $2. <laughs> I, I nailed be, it. Uh, you just like you turn yourself into the, richer. Yeah, you turn yourself into the stonks meme. You feel real smug about it, and then you realize you paid like forty dollars on <laughs> and so you're cutting into your own margins. <laughs> Next up is Havoc. Two zero. After each turn, you lose one of your energy, but it gains four power. Hmm. I feel like this isn't that good. I feel like, especially, 
yeah, I, I just feel like you don't have enough ways to like search this out early enough to make it worth it. So it's like super inconsistent. You can just like draw it late and it's just a dead card. Um I guess it's like minimum if you play this on your last turn, do it you still two, four, yes. it's still a two four? Okay. They're actually a lot better then. Um I think this card's alright. I, I I think it's like fine, but I I don't think it's like super super good. I feel like it's like it's a two four. That's like not that bad, but I'd say it's like super mid. Yeah, I mean, I would say it actually is that bad. You said not that bad. It <laughs> is that bad. Havoc is quite bad. Uh, this is a guy where it's like if you play him early, you hamstring your entire game plan because you lose energy every turn. You're just like, oh, I can't do anything. And if you play him late, most of the time he, he sees play, he's like, all right, I'm going to play Havoc. He's going to be a 2-8. I play him on 5, and I lose 1 energy on 6, so my turn 6 has 5 energy. And it's like, okay, that's cool. This is the kind of card I probably wouldn't have put on here if it weren't for you already understanding Marvel Snap in terms of, like, energy and when it matters and all of that. And I do think it's it's helpful to understand that to evaluate this card. But basically, what happens with this guy is his best use case is effectively a 3-8, right? Because 2-8 plus the energy you yeah. lose. And it's like, that tends to be how he ends up seeing play. But... Uh, last I checked, his win rate was something like 35% in deck. So, like, you put him in your deck and you're just like, ah, I'd like to lose 65% of my yeah, games. Thank sure. you. And so he's like, he's like this card where it's like, it, it, it's not necessarily that he sucks so bad. I do think he kind of sucks. But I can't think of a way where he has a home. Like, I can't find a way for him yeah. to make sense. And There's nothing that he really synergizes with. Right, and it's like, I don't know how to make him make sense in a way that makes that into something better than else other thing I could play. Like, when you look at this guy and you look at Gladiator and you're like, well, if I'm going to play a 3-8, why don't I just play the 3-8? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, there's, he's just, he's, he's weird. I almost wonder if he'd still be bad if he got, like, plus 5. Like, I feel like, I feel like he could get plus 5 and that would be, like, a very compelling card very quickly. Yeah, because then if you, if you have extra energy like even on your last turn to play it like he's minimum like a two, a five, two right five, so. right and it's just like like that suddenly you're like okay that's a real card i i, I think they went conservative with him because this is a card that's either going to be broken or really bad just based on the numbers on it but i would be interested in seeing him at a two five personally like i'd just be like what if you got plus five that would be what i would try i also think it'd be interesting if he was like a one one drop because like oh. you're not you don't want to play him on one anyways right Right, you don't want to play him any time before like five. Yeah, right? exactly. So if he was just like a one, a one drop, he'd just be like a one four most of the time, wouldn't he? Yeah, which I feel like is okay as a card that you can't really play until your yeah. like your last couple of turns, right? Because a lot of time you, depending on the deck, you won't even like want to spend one. Yeah, and I wonder if that's a nerf though, because of Killmonger, right? Like if you make him a one yeah. drop and suddenly you're investing in him and you're just like, ha ha, all my <laughs> stuff dies. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I just like I want to see them do something with him because he has. There's no way to turn the downside into an upside yet, and so it's like just make him a stat stick. It's interesting, please. Speaking of Killmonger, they finally released an anti Killmonger card. This is Kyera, three four ongoing ability. Your one and six cost cards cannot be destroyed. Okay, I, you know what? I love Zoo. I love Kazoo. Same. Okay, Actually. I would. Love it if this card, I really want, just for optimism sake, I'm going to say this is a great card because I love playing Kazoo. I really hope this is a good card. I will, I will queue up some Marvel Snap later if this card, if I can get access to this card somehow. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say, I feel like Kazoo is good enough if you can't destroy stuff to say that this is a good card. You are correct. This is a good card. This is a great card, even. This is one of the strongest cards they've released in a while, but it's not because of Kazoo. It's because of Thanos Lockjaw. Thanos has all these stones out there that are preventing it from... The, preventing those stones from getting blown up is good, right? But also, the way Thanos Lockjaw works is you Thanos into... You Lockjaw into giant idiots, and one of the main counters to your giant idiots is them getting Shang-Chi'd. A lot of your giant idiots cost six, Suddenly, you can't get Shang Chi'd, and you can't get Killmongered in a deck that loses to getting Shang Chi'd and Killmongered. So this card, this card shows up there. I will say, 
there is a guy in like top 200 who's like a zoo Kyera main so it's it's it, it is actually possible i lost to that guy several times like this zoo i also i have the same weakness for zoo i love playing like zoo garbage like it, it's it's my kind of thing and i think that you know Kyera definitely makes it a lot more plausible than it was previously because now you just don't free lose to like just random killmongers everywhere but I think the main reason Kyra is a good card is unfortunately uh, the big purple Nini. Grimace. Who I do not like as much. You don't like Thanos as much? A, not a Thanos? I, I, don't, I don't have it, so I've only played against it. Oh, okay, and yeah, I just... that would make sense. <laughs> yeah, I would hate it if I didn't have it too. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules, 4-7. The first time another card moves here each turn, it moves to another location. So he, like, takes his little baseball bat and swats it out. This works for either your cards or your opponent's cards. So, I mean, like, I, I, like, as someone, like, at the collection level that I am, this would be, like, to me, a great card in my collection level because I feel like this is, I mean, obviously a phenomenal card in, like, early collection move decks. But I don't think that, like, move is a super strong archetype in general um so i feel like this card probably isn't that great like i'm trying to think of like uh there's probably like other uses the first time another card moves here you should move to another location yeah i'm this probably counters some stuff that your opponent will do to your board too though no, I, I'm not loving this card. I feel like I feel like it's it seems too niche. Um, I'm gonna say it's like not very good. That is correct. Uh, Hercules is a little bit too niche right now. I they actually he released as a four six and they very quickly made him a four seven because they were like, okay, this guy kind of really sucks. At four seven, he's a little more interesting to me. The move decks are not very good right like there there's this thing where and i don't know tell me if this exists in pokemon where there's like decks that certain people can play at high levels but it's unclear if that's just them playing really well and not the deck where it's like it's like i have a friend who's like oh no i swear hercules move is really good he's like a top 50 player he's a really good player and it's like are we sure that that's the deck or is that you is that a thing that happens in Pokemon a lot where it's just like there's just like a guy with a pet deck and it's just like okay, thanks. I think I think somewhat. I think like even even the deck that I won the internationals with last year, mm. it was like not really meta before I won internets with it. Um and people still like are like nah, the deck too clunky, I don't like it. Um but uh it's definitely picked up more now, but I think there are definitely decks in Pokemon that like only a handful of people are willing to play and only a couple players do well with. Do you think that, I mean, like, obviously you've had success with in, in that situation. Do you think that more credence needs to be given to, like, good players saying this is good versus, like, aggregate stats saying that it's not? Or I think so. I think because, like, I think sometimes those decks just have, like, even for, like, a good player, just have, like, a really high skill ceiling. And so, like, even as a good player, you might start playing it and just like don't give it enough time to like see how good it can be if you play it to like its highest potential um and so like a player that's put a ton of time into it will obviously um be able to see those lines more often um so i do think that like i think sometimes a deck is just bad and someone's just really good and making it work and they should probably switch to something better but um i think generally like a really good player is like insistent that the deck that they're like grinding tons and tons of hours into is really good. It's probably better than you think it is. Okay, see, this is actually like informative to my actual experience right now. It's <laughs> like there, there actually is a guy who I trust who's like, really like, D dude, trust me, this Hercules deck is actually really <laughs> good. And then I go look at the numbers, and it's just like this is like the worst deck I've ever seen on like the, mm -hmm. the public trackers for for stats and all of that. And it's just yeah. like this deck is god awful. And I do see like it's incredibly complex to play. But I, at some point, I feel like even if it was complex, if it was as broken as it's being said, I feel like the numbers would be slightly better, right? Like, it's like, 
Like there's there's it feels like an inflection point for me. But like I guess what you're what you're convincing me is I need to give Hercules a second chance is is basically what I'm doing. Yeah. Here. I need probably. to give Hercules a second chance. Yeah, okay. maybe you need to prove that I was wrong with my answer. And that was good. <laughs> That's not how it works. Normally the guest <laughs> normally the guest is like wrong about something and they're like, no, I'll be right in like ten years. <laughs> this time it's like, yeah, I, I was you need to prove that I was wrong about yeah. something. <laughs> Next up is the Grand Master, Marvel Snap's newest card. This is actually the newest card in the game right now. On reveal, move one of your other on reveal cards here, meaning at the location he's played, to the middle location. When it moves to the middle location, its on reveal ability happens again. I feel like this card is really good. I feel like doing another on reveal effect. And like, because you're like also like denying your opponent information in a way about where the card you placed before is going to go because you can move it um or like just in general you can like knowing that your opponent's playing this means any of your opponent's cards could move it like gives you so much more flexibility um i think this card's really good i feel like using another on reveal effect and being able to like potentially move a card you committed earlier is really good obviously a two zero like makes me a little a little more wary but i feel like this is pretty strong Okay, so again, this is like one of the newest cards. Don't like everything I'm about to say right now is still just my opinion. It's not 100% fact, but uh, no, this card is not very good. Uh, this is a a card that looks and plays. Look, it looks like it plays phenomenally, and then you put it in your deck, and you're just like, oh, I don't even want to use this some of the time. Like it is. It, it, the best things I've found to do with this card are almost always uh, like Brood, Absorbing Man, and then this, right? Where you're just like making a bunch of dudes. And basically everything else I've tried with it is fairly mediocre. The numbers on the public trackers are fairly mediocre. I don't have a bunch of good players beating down my doors to tell me that this one is good. I have more players telling me that Hercules is good than I have players telling me that the Grandmaster is good. And... I think right now his main issue is when you look at on reveals that you actually want to copy, there are several, but they don't necessarily cohesively go in a deck together. And he does not necessarily cohesively go in that deck either. Like that, like his main issue is, are you willing to use one of the 12 cards in your deck on a guy that might do nothing. That's the fundamental issue that he has, is like, there are games where this guy will do absolutely nothing, or the thing he does is not worth putting him in your deck, right? When you put him in your deck, you do you do that because you expect him to do something broken. That's how you that's how you play a 2-0, right? You need that 2-0 to do something broken. And so a lot of Grandmaster decks are like, okay, I have the broken thing, but I also have like this backup plan, right? But if you're ever doing the backup plan, he's not a good card. Because you only put him yeah. in the deck to do the broken thing because he's a freaking two zero. And so like your backup, like you need to have more broken things and there just aren't enough broken things for him to be doing that actually makes sense. Yeah, and I feel think, lack of flexibility. Yes, because like if you are going to be using him on your backup plan, he's not a card worth playing. And he's yeah. only worth playing if you're consistently doing something broken with him. And right now, nobody is consistently doing something broken with him. Everyone is consistently doing stuff that's, like, pretty mid, right? Like, that's what he does. He's consistently midding it out. Like, that's that's what this guy is doing. And he's, he's like, a very, I would say, polarizing card because a lot of people were very hyped on him. I was not one of those people. And so there is a degree to which, like, you know, this is there's a potential for me to be, like, you know, uh, you know cognitive bias, right? Like, I see what I expect to see. But he's not moving the needle in anything he's in right now, at least, at the time of recording. Just as like a hypothetical, do you think if this if he didn't have the restriction of having oh, to move the card to the middle, if you could move, if you could select where the card, like even select to stay or move to either other location, do you think he'd be playable? I don't know if he'd be playable. He'd be a lot better, right? Like it's not like the middle restriction is the worst part about him. It's less. It's more just like he is a two zero, and so if yeah, he was a free that's not exactly include, that thing. like. One of the things I think about a lot is, like, even if this was a 2-3, I don't know if I'd be putting it in there, because the issue is not that it's a 2-3. The issue is, like, 
it just isn't a body that impacts the board ever. So, like, if mm-hmm. this guy were, like, I don't know, a 3-4 or something like that, suddenly I'd be a lot more interested in him, even though that's only, like, that. that's an, that's an increase in uh, the energy cost, right? Like, where, it, where it's, like, I just feel like if he had a body that impacted the lane that he was in, I would be a lot more interested in what he was selling. Uh, but as is, what's happening is you're taking up a board slot in the lane that you put him in with a zero, and then it just gets harder to win that lane, and it's like, how am I winning these games? I am literally playing a zero power guy. And so I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think it's an issue with his text. I think it's an issue with just like, it's really hard to win games when you're putting zero power on the board. Yeah, it can't be zero. Yeah, it just it cannot be zero. Meek, you may know him from Thor Ragnarok. He's Korg's buddy. Uh, after each turn, if you discarded any cards, you gain one power for each of the cards discarded, and you move. So for the record, he gets all the cards you discard and go to power, but he only moves once. There are like there are a lot of good discard cards, but I don't know if any of them I don't know how meta discarding discard cards are like as an archetype. Feels mediocre to me. I, I'm gonna say that this is not good. And this is one that like I could see if it is good being super good with like um something that like full discards hand, uh when you have a big hand. I mean but generally like not having control over where he goes for the most part and having yeah I, i'm gonna say that it's not it's not super you also have to have him earlier for him to actually like get value if you're not going for just like a one turn discard your whole hand power him up. that was i heard a home run sound in my brain <laughs> as you were walking through that every single sound every single word you said there was 100 percent correct it was exactly exactly correct you you'd like absolute home run 400 feet outfield wall like crushed it demolished one of the best you're ever going to do that is exactly me that is 100 percent to a t what this card is the moving isn't even really an upside because you don't know where he's going to go it's just like he it's just it's just there it's actually probably a downside the reason you play this card is so that you just to discard a bunch of cards you play your normal discard stuff. He's like your bad Mobius, or bad Morbius, I should say. It's Morbin time, not Mobin time. Uh, and he is like bad bad Morbius in those decks, but like there are decks that are interested in that. They're just not very good. And he is definitely a card that released subpar. This is a card that is not uh, going to see play anywhere but his chosen archetype, and his chosen archetype is not very good, although he probably is the best one drop in his chosen archetype that really just speaks to the lack of power in the archetype rather than his own efficiency however yeah i mean he could be like a like there are there are decks that are like going like wong modok discard your whole hand twice kind of thing where it's just like ah this guy's like 12 power that's super dope but it's like you're kind of going to a lot of effort to make that work and he tends to not be worth doing that there those are not good decks those are those are meme decks and they're meme decks because they're trying to make a meme card good actually can you tell me something i I, i'm using this opportunity to learn about the pokemon tcg uh are there like do people have like pet meme decks in uh ptcg like how 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 prevalent are like people just like all right i've got my meme deck this is what i play is that an all is that a common thing i think i think people will play like bad deck like meme decks to be a little bit nicer with the term to uh like one event but like i don't think i think like generally people like you can't really if a deck is bad in pokemon like you can't steal many games off of anything relevant. So, like, it, people get off of them pretty quick. Like, it happens where people, like, pick up... Um, it happens more of, with, like, what we were talking about earlier, with, like, move. Um, yeah. Where, like, it's, like, sort of off-meta, and people will, like, make it their pet deck. But as far as decks that are just, like, 
yeah, this is low tier. Like, yeah. it doesn't compete with the top stuff. You just you just won't steal many games off of people with them. So people just don't really like me. Like on like a super casual level, like if you're just going to like your local card shop, um, probably more so. But is that if just you go to like any tournament? Yeah, to, I think it's just the like the top decks are consistent enough that if you're playing a bad deck, they're just gonna run over you super easily. Yeah, like if you're playing something that. Like because you draw your entire deck effectively, right? You have access yeah. to everything in there. Uh, the deck that does better stuff tends to win. It feels like yeah, a pretty exactly. ruthless environment, honestly. Like, yeah. the The nice thing is there are like because of the consistency, it means that there. I think I feel like it improves the diversity in the sense that like there are definitely a lot of decks that get gate kept out, where it's like, oh, these can't compete against what's against the top three decks. I just can't play this at all. Yeah. However, there are a lot of decks that are top tier because you can pull off their strategy so consistently. So as long as it can do something good, you can probably pull it off. Oh, that is interesting. Right, you're right. It is like a there's like an upside and a downside to it, right? Like yeah. there's no there's no like, oh, look at all the hoops you have to jump through because Pokemon makes it very easy to jump through those hoops because yeah. of the way that like the the cards work. There's just like a card. I learned that there was a card that just says take two cards, whatever two cards you want from your deck. It's just like a card. There, right now, I don't think there's anything. There's like, there's nothing that just like vanilla, vanilla lets you search for two. Okay, but like type, you can search for two of a type, or like yeah, one of each yeah, type or something two of like, like a specific kind of card. Oh my god! Or, um, yeah, there's like Irida's like search your deck for one water Pokemon, one item, and that's like. But yeah, you're old, and, and of... like you're playing that in a deck with all water Pokemon, so you effectively yeah. just yeah, like okay, that yeah, like that's. Yeah. Oh, it's it's the, the yeah the the game is super consistent. I think yeah, it definitely has downsides and upsides because the biggest downside is that like when one player does just have an unreasonably bad hand, it's mm. it becomes way harder to stay in the game because your opponent's deck is consistent, right? It sets up. Yeah. Um. So if you have a really slow start, it's hard to come back from that. Um. But generally speaking the consistency does allow a lot of strategies to work that probably otherwise wouldn't because if the if the text on the card is good and it does something good you can probably make it work that makes sense to me next up is sebastian shaw a three four whenever this card permanently gains power it gets plus two more power so wherever this is means if you have a card that adds power to your deck it gets it in the deck card that adds power to your hand it gets it in the hand card that adds power to your board it gets it on the board Okay, I'm going to use information that I've accrued over this call. That's how you're supposed to do it. That's literally that like there's a reason. Yes, that, that's yeah, how you're supposed to do good. it. You're not cheating. You're saying because, this card is good. Yeah, earlier we talked about, you said that like there are not a lot of good three drops. Um, and also you talked about how there's like a lot of good cards right now that give other things power. So I'm going to say that this is a, a very good card. Unfortunately, this is one of the three drops that isn't very good. <laughs> this is... No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. No, I mean, like, he, he does have more room to shine, generally speaking, but he runs into issues in terms of, like, it's unclear if he's the best thing his own decks can be doing, because there's a, there's a, there's definitely a role for him. He goes in decks, uh, Silver Surfer decks, Silver Surfer, a card that buffs all your three drops, right? So you play that alongside a card like Nakia that buffs all your hands. Suddenly he ends up going very tall. That synergizes. Those cards sort of overlap with cards like Brood, which make copies of themselves. So the buffs carry over onto the copies as well. Like it all sort of makes sense. It's just that deck has in, it's a deck that puts points on the board, but doesn't interact very strongly. And a time-honored archetype in Marvel Snap, probably the archetype that I play the very most of, is just a deck that does some points and some good interaction, right? This this exists in almost every game. And in, like, Magic, it would be called a mid-range deck, where it's just, like, yeah. I am presenting threats and also interacting. And, you know, generally, it's a mid-range deck. It's a tempo deck. However you want to however you want to slice it. Like, these are decks that exist. Uh, it's just a question of, like, in Magic, the delineation tends to be, like, what the interaction is and what colors you're in. If you're blue and playing counter spells, it's, you know, a tempo deck. If you're playing, you know, mid-rangey, uh, like, green jund stuff, it's a it's a mid-range deck. But the issue with this this kind of archetype, the archetypes that Shaw goes in, is they lack the right kind of interaction for every metagame. 
So in metagames where they make sense, they can be good. It's just we haven't been in one of those in a very, very long time. The most played card in Marvel Snap is Shang-Chi, which doesn't fit in that deck very well. And the most played card in Marvel Snap is Shang-Chi for a reason, because it's the most applicable tech card, the baseline interactive card in the game. And it doesn't go in Silver Surfer decks, which is kind of Shaw's only home. And so he ends up in this weird spot where he does make sense in his own archetype, but his own archetype doesn't always make sense in the metagame. No, that makes sense. So it's like Silver Surfer just isn't super strong because it's sort of you build a board, but you don't do anything with it, really. You don't like... In, yeah. You, you, if your opponent's board is better, you just lose. It's not really... Yeah, that's pretty much yeah. the issue that he has. It's like you build a board and then you're like, ah, we're doing board size comparisons. And then if, I, if you lose, you lose. And it's just like, yeah. there are decks that are going to beat you if you don't interact with them. And Surfer isn't very good at doing that. And Shaw is very much only a Surfer card. That's like the only deck he goes in. Next up is Scar. He is the current season pass card for Marvel Snap. He is a 611 that costs two less for each card you have on the board that has 10 or more power. On on payrolls, it just doesn't seem like that great of a card to me. I feel like if you have that many cards with 10 or more power, you don't need this. So I'm gonna say this is I'm gonna say this riskily say this is not a good card. It's my last one. It's my my last chance yeah. to get a point, but I'm gonna say this is not good. Because I, I feel like I don't know, I feel like the condition it feels like a win more card to me. I honestly think you're right. Uh, people play this guy right now in Thanos Lockjaw, and I think he's good there because you have Kyera preventing your stuff from getting blown up by, like, Shang-Chi's or whatever. You're cheating out cards early. But outside of that, I just don't think he's even close to a playable card anywhere else. And he's, like, barely playable in that deck, where it's like, this is a card that is, like, maybe the 10th, 11th, 12th best card in its own deck, and totally unplayable everywhere else he's good right now because of all the broken things that that deck does but like i i honestly i don't see it with him like i think he's just okay i don't necessarily think the reason is the win more stuff he's like yeah he's a win more but that's a deck that can use win more is pretty effectively so it it helps in that deck for sure there's also an interaction that they're gonna fix where a card that uh, should not let him discount through it is currently letting him discount through it. And so part of his power right now, even in that archetype, is like bug abuse, actually. And so I, 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 I think you're closer to right than not, despite the fact that he's seeing play in a very good archetype right now. I, I, I think I would give you that. <laughs> if, I, if I kept track of points, if there was like a little counter that goes ding in the bottom, it would go ding there. We don't keep track of points here. I guess there's probably someone in the audience who has, but like, yeah, like someone's that's, got the score. Someone probably has a spreadsheet. Don't, but... Please do not comment it because <laughs> it's not good. All right. Thank you so much, Cyrus. Thank you so much for your appearance on the show and for teaching me more about the Pokemon TCG. Normally, I'm not like, like, I've played most of the other games I have people on about, right? Like, because that's how I know the people that I have on. Uh, I've never played the Pokemon TCG. I have, like, two decks that I play with my girlfriend sometimes, like, extremely rarely, uh, because I, 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 I'm trying to, like, sneakily get her into card games, and Pokemon seems like a good, a good bet for that, but, like, it's, uh, it's, uh, a, a, I, I, I am very, I came away from this knowing a lot more about the game than I thought I would actually come away from this doing. Normally, I'm not asking those questions, but they keep kept coming into my mind and like, this perspective could be valuable to me. And uh, <laughs> so I really appreciate that. Uh, thank yeah, you thank so much. Make sure, uh, this is this is the part where you shout yourself out. You tell people where to find you, all that stuff. You brag about yourself. You, you do that part. Yeah, so uh, you can find me on Twitter at CyrusStasisTCG. Um, if you do play Pokemon, I do offer coaching on Medify, it's also Medify, just Cyrus Davis. Um, so those are pretty much the two places you can find me. I do have a Twitch that is the same, Cyrus Davis TCG. 
Uh, I don't stream very often, but I do plan on streaming more soon. So, you know, if you're interested in Pokemon streams or Runeterra streams. Um, what about Marvel Snap, though? What about Marvel I, Snap? Maybe just... some Marvel Snap. Oh, you know, <laughs> that honestly, looking at the cards did make me want to pick it up again. So, um, yeah. yeah, so I, I, I hopefully will be streaming more often. If, if anyone's interested, follow me there. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, and thank you so much for having me. Of course. And everyone who made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Make sure you go follow Cyrus. She is dope as hell. I will see you in the next one.